Hello and welcome. In this video, we're going to be talking about how do we create portlets in the LifeRay world, in the LifeRay ecosphere, and how do we uh, create portlets using some of LifeRay's technologies. So let's go ahead and get started. So let's go ahead and address some key ideas here before going into the details. So first things first, right? LifeRay does have a portlet container that allows for the deployment of your Java standard portlets. So everything from the previous videos still apply if you wanted to create a portlet in that way. LifeRay portlets, when we're using the OSGI framework, are not exactly portlet compliant. So we're not adhering strictly to the Java standard. We follow a lot of the core principles, but it is not exactly a tried and true JSR portlet. So just keep that in mind. You are able to take the portlets that you create as wars and deploy them within LifeRay. They are supported. So those are some of the key concepts and big ideas. Let's go ahead and dive into some of the logistics of creating a portlet and combining that those ideas with OSGI. So everything that we've talked about in the OSGI world revolves around components and services. So as you can imagine, we're going to be creating portlet components as we go. We're going to be implementing the portlet interface in order to do so. So within a portlet module that we're going to be creating in the LifeRay world, we'll still have the Java class, which will act not only as the portlet class, but also the portlet component as well. We'll have the component annotation there. We'll also have a number of resource files as well, things like the JSPs. So looking at a portlet module, here is a screenshot of the structure of a portlet module created in LifeRay. So you'll have the portlet component. In this example, it is trainingportlet.java. You'll have your JSPs, and you'll also have your Gradle and BND files as well. So within the BND file, we don't really have anything new, right? These are the same things that we've seen within other BND files as well. So nothing new there. So the build.gradle contains all of the dependencies that we need in order to properly compile and build this portlet module. So this is something a little bit different than what we typically do with the Java standard portlet. Within the portlet component, you'll notice that within the property attribute up at the top, there are a number of properties defined that might look a little bit familiar. One thing you may have noticed is that we haven't mentioned a portlet.xml yet. That's because there is no portlet.xml when we're dealing with portlet components or creating LifeRay portlet modules. Every attribute that we typically define within the portlet.xml is defined within that property attribute. You'll also notice that service portion is referring to the portlet interface. You'll also see that we are extending MVC portlet. So let's go ahead and talk about what exactly is this MVC portlet. So MVC portlet is a LifeRay implementation of the portlet specification. So what we've done in the LifeRay world is create our own implementation of a Java standard portlet, but this does follow the basic principles and concepts that we've already talked about. So the main reason we did create MVC portlet is to reduce the amount of boilerplate code that typically goes into creating a portlet. MVC portlet does still inherit the portlet interface. So again, we're not breaking any rules or doing anything that's uh, completely out of the ordinary. If we look at the anatomy of MVC portlet, you'll see that MVC portlet does extend a generic portlet. So again, a lot of the principles and ideas that we talked about with a standard portlet still apply. So as we've already mentioned, in our OSGI based portlets, there are no XML configurations. So no portlet.xml, no web.xml. All of those properties are defined within the component annotation. You'll also notice within the code that all of the Java standard properties that we would expect in portlet.xml are prefaced with javax.portlet. So something to keep in mind. We have a number of links here referencing documentation for you to take a look at uh, if you do have any questions about those properties. So here in the screenshot, we see our portlet.xml. We have things like the portlet name, display name, and some init parameters. If we look at the component aspect, so converting this into an OSGI 
portlet component, you'll see the Java X portlet display name is training portlet. We'll have those init parameters as well. So we can see the translation between what we do in portlet.xml and within the component annotation. Let's talk about the portlet lifecycle. So the render phase, the action phase, and so on are still implemented within an MVC portlet, a Liferay MVC portlet. In this case though, we at Liferay have created a way to implement these different phases. So we have created these things called MVC commands. So MVC commands are created to handle the different phases within a portlet's lifecycle. So we have one for the render and the action phase. So MVC render command, MVC action command, and we also have an MVC resource command. And the two big ones we're gonna be looking at is gonna be the render and the action command. So how do they work? So we saw previously in a Java standard portlet, in order to invoke something like the render phase, we will use a render URL over on the JSP side. Within the render URL, we can define a number of different parameters. We see here at the highlighted line of code that we are defining a name value pair. The name is always going to be the same, MVC render command name. That's standard, that's what we at Liferay have defined and what we're looking for. The value on the other hand is something that we as developers will get to define. In Liferay best practice, we like to define it using what looks like a file path. Again, it could be any string, but Liferay best practice defines us specifying it as if it was a file path. So my portlet path slash view underscore entry. So that parameter is going to be passed over. Now the question is, what's next? So we create an MVC render command, just as everything else in Liferay. This is going to be implemented as a component. You'll see that we've created a class that implements an interface called MVC render command. We create the component and we need to define a couple of properties. The first property that we define is which portlet are we listening to? So in this case, we're listening to the training portlet. From that portlet, what parameter are we listening for? That's the MVC command name. So slash training portlet slash view entry is the specific parameter that we're listening for. So when a render URL is invoked, we're going to be listening for that value that we saw over on the JSP side. If this component hears or receives that parameter, then the rest of the class is invoked, invoking the render method here, rendering a specific JSP. So the principle is very similar. The one difference here is that component annotation and those two properties that we need to define. So we saw how MVC render commands worked. Let's talk about building out our applications using portlets. When we're creating applications, again, we discussed how the portlet accounts for two thirds of the MVC design pattern. So we have the view and the controller. When we're using OSGI, an application can be built up using multiple different modules. So of those modules, one of them is going to be a portlet module. We usually designate that as a dash web. Let's take a look and see what an application might look like. So training dash web is the portlet component. It's gonna account for, again, the view and the controller aspect of our application. We'll also have the model aspect, the M of the MVC accounted for as well. So that can be designated within their own modules. Usually in life rate convention, you'll see those designated as dash API and dash service. Dash service is the implementation of the API. So one example here is the Liferay blogs application. You can see here within the GitHub repository that there are a number of different modules that are used in order to implement the blogs application. As you look through, you'll see the dash APIs, the dash webs, and so on. So we spent a lot of time talking about Liferay's MVC portlet, now MVC portlet is not the only way that you can create your front end or your UI of an application. In fact, we have a number of different ways to do so. You can use things like Spring MVC, you can use FreeMarker, you can use the Soy portlet and so on. So there's a number of different ways that you can create the UI 
Again, one of the main ways that we do so within the Liferay world is using that MVC portlet. So what do we need to do in order to create an MVC portlet or just a portlet, uh, portlet module in general? So for following the principles we've talked about, we would create a Liferay module using the MVC portlet template. From there, we would set any additional portlet properties that we need to set within the component annotation. A lot of those will be taken care of if we're using either Blade CLI or Liferay Developer Studio. We'll then decide which UI we want to use. Again, we have a number of different technologies that could take care of the UI for us. We'll then create the relevant MVC commands, assuming that we're following that principle, in order to handle a number of different portlet life cycles, like the render and the action phase. And then from there, we'll implement the business logic. So let's go ahead and summarize uh, some of the things that we have talked about within this video. So Liferay has its own implementation of a portlet that extends generic portlet. Again, that's called MVC portlet. Portlets in Liferay are created as components that extend the Liferay MVC portlet, portlet framework. MVC commands are Liferay's way of implementing the render, action, and serve resource phase of a portlet. And again, we're going to be talking about that more in detail, looking specifically at the MVC render and MVC action commands. In the Liferay app, the portlet component only makes up one part of the application. The API and the implementation of the API for a Liferay app are usually contained in a separate module project. Again, the API is in the dash API, and then the implementation of it is in the dash service, generally speaking. So that wraps it up for this video, and I will see you in the next video.